This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. It was about 6 p.m., already pitch black out, and one of those wet, stingy snows was coming down hard. Mr. Tadaro parked his car in the street in front of the cruise clubhouse. He was an older gentleman, 60, I think. What was about to happen to him was, well, to me it was something out of Auschwitz. Roy had ordered Freddy, who was like Roy's servant, to lure Mr. Tadaro to the clubhouse by making him think Roy had a used car to sell. But actually, Roy was going to kill him so that the man's nephew, a friend of Roy's, could take over Mr. Dodaro's film production business. Roy was always available for this kind of work. After the first few, I think he started enjoying it. Anyway, it's dark and it's snowing, and as expected, Mr. Dodaro sees Roy's guy Freddy waiting outside and says hello. They start walking toward the clubhouse. Now, there is a picture window with Venetian blinds next to the doorway, and as Freddy's walking, he sees someone inside the clubhouse pinch the blinds and look out. All he sees is the person's eyeballs. It's eerie, and he begins to quiver. He knows Mr. Tadaro is going to die, but he's never seen Roy DeMeo murder before. Mr. Tadaro goes in first. There is a living room off the hallway that leads to the kitchen. As soon as Mr. Tadaro is past the opening to the living room, Freddy is startled to see someone he knows, Chris, leaping out into the hallway with a butcher knife in his hand. It was almost a balletic move. Chris, by the way, was the first kid to join Roy's crew. At the moment, he doesn't have any clothes on except for his jockey shorts. He always worked in his underwear because he didn't want to bloody his clothes. Freddy starts to wet his pants. He believes Chris is going to stab him, but no. Chris just grabs him by the arm and wings him out of the way. You, over here, he says. Freddy then sees Roy DeMeo coming out of the dark from the other end of the hall, just gliding along and he's got a gun in one hand and a white towel in the other. He just glides up and shoots dumbfounded Mr. Tadaro in the head, and before the man even hits the floor, Roy is wrapping the towel around his head to prevent the blood from spurting all over. Then Chris comes over and stabs Mr. Tadaro in the heart, many times. That stops it from pumping blood, Roy tells Freddy, who's still shaking. The murder only takes a few seconds, but of course they're not done yet. They're going to make Mr. Tadaro disappear. Some other kids in Roy's crew appear from somewhere, and they all drag Mr. Tadaro's body across the kitchen and into the bathroom, where they put it in a bathtub. Now, before they begin cutting Mr. Tadaro up, they have to wait 45 minutes or so until his blood congeals. Dismemberment isn't so messy that way, Roy tells Freddy, like Freddy was a medical student. So they wait. Maybe they even ordered a pizza, I don't know, but we do know they did that once while waiting. One of the men waiting actually lived in the clubhouse. The others called him Dracula, and not just because he had silver hair and a deep voice. As I indicated, Mr. Tadara was one of those freelance jobs that Roy and the crew did. There were a lot of those. But normally, they were out making money for a gangster named Nino. You knew Nino was a gangster as soon as he walked into a room. He was a murderer, too, but did not do as much killing, and, so far as we know, was not present for any of the dismemberments of the clubhouse. Neither was Dominic, who was the guy Nino used to collect his cash and keep an eye on the DeMeo crew. When Dominic was a little boy, Nino practically stole him from his father. Dominic went on to be a Green Beret war hero in Nam and was a tough guy, but he did not have a killer's eyes. Roy and his crew, they all did. Eventually, Mr. Tadaro's body was taken out of the bathtub and placed on either a tarpaulin or one of those swimming pool liners they sometimes used. Then Roy and his crew sawed the man apart, put him in garbage bags, and took him to the biggest dump in Brooklyn. It was like a disassembly line. None of Mr. Tadaro was ever seen again. This butchery went on all the time. It was systematic. The system was, you know, almost ceremonious. And they used to talk about the kick they got from it, the high, the power. They used to say killing made them feel like God. <laughs>